Welcome to episode 30 of the Slab Podcast, where the grades matter, there are no rules. How are you doing, Professor Oak? Wonderful. Absolutely fantastic. Got a little bit of a sore throat, so you'll have to bear with me. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Uh, not bad. <laughs> Maybe a little bit better feeling than you because of stuff he knows, but us combined, we're one healthy human being. So here we are. Um, <laughs> summer, <laughs> summer germs, right? We made it 30 episodes in. Looking forward to this one. Just Amazing. fresh off the National Sports Card Convention. It was pretty awesome. Can't wait to talk to you about it. Haven't talked to you about it at all. So looking forward to kind of explaining the different things I've seen and all this different stuff going on. So it'll be pretty awesome. Yeah, you've been a ghost. You've, you've obviously been very busy and wrapped up in it, which I'm glad about. I wanted to. I didn't, I didn't bother you and message you and stuff. Like I was really excited for you to, to spend that time and just – get away and enjoy it. I know you have family and you're around friends and kind of all over the place doing a lot of stuff. So I'm excited to hear about it, get some feedback on the highs and the lows and uh, what, what, what really happened? What, what stories you've got oh, yeah. to tell? Oh yeah, man. I'm um, looking forward to it. Look forward to it. 30, but uh, first 30 episodes, 30, three, zero, 30. man. We're, uh, we're legal now. No, I'm 30 episodes. How the hell did we do 30 episodes? That is it's a lot of time. I can't, be- I can't believe it, honestly. Like that, like that just feels unbelievable to me. But I'm I'm in a good way, very excited about it. I feel I feel very good. So thanks for everyone that's been sticking around and watching us from the beginning. Um, the real OGs, you know who you are. So we appreciate you. Hell yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, let's jump into last week's spicy topic. Of course, I won. Yes. Um, no shocker there. And it kind of leads into <laughs> the whole discussion. <laughs> I figured it might. I figured there was a good shot. It could win. Um, what I had said was the National will be the biggest Pokemon convention in the next three years. Uh, what do you think about that? I'll let you go first. You know what? Honestly, I just, I just don't know enough about it. Like, I've never yeah. been... Uh, I remember last year watching a lot of YouTube videos talking about the sports side of it. Like there was a lot yeah. of focus on sports cards and getting deals. A lot of people talking about dollar bins and getting things that were like big, huge cards that were just like sellers just throwing it in bins and like had them in checking on it and stuff. And um a lot of trading, I guess, was going on, you know, between stuff and I learned a lot from from those videos and the, the live streams that I was listening to last year, but I never really heard hardly any people talk about Pokemon last year. So when you said that, like I'm not not that I'm like negative about it, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say that I'm pessimistic, but like that seems surprising to me that the the national like would be a big area of focus for for Pokemon, but honestly, like why not like if there's a bunch of people that that collect stuff they're already in a huge location a lot of lot of traffic a lot of effort and people and things being set up for this big sports card section like why not do the same and and get a whole area set up for pokemon and let pokemon embrace it at, at the same time uh there's definitely crossover there's people that like both not as many as as i would like but there, there definitely is some so I could see there being an appetite for it. People wanting to take a bite of the apple, walk around, you know, and see what what the fruits they can find. But yeah, um, I could see it. I, I guess it was just unexpected when you said it. So, yeah, what do you think after spending the weekend there? Do you still feel like that spicy? Do you feel like it's realistic? Do you like what's next year look like? Like, tell me. Yeah. My so my initial thoughts going into this was like, yeah, I believe this could happen, no problem. I was like, it's ma- like everything I hear, it's massive. It's a big show. It's like, of course, if Pokemon were to get thirty percent of the national as far as like floor space, then it would probably at that rate be bigger than Collecticon. I was like, thirty percent seems feasible, right? Um, after going there, I don't think so. Um. I think it's going to be tied into sports quite a bit. It'll be a much slower, gradual rise of Pokemon there. It sounds like there was definitely more this year there than the three year prior. It's been growing year over year, it seems. Um, but I think I the main that. the main gatekeep issue is 
they're not getting a lot of new vendors. It's kind of old vendors keep coming back, renewing their tables because getting getting a new booth, getting a new section for uh, the national, you got to pretty much assassinate somebody to take over his spot because it's everyone just re-upping their their section year after year. So we're just tied into all these vendors that have been doing sports cards their entire life and they're slowly adapting pokemon pretty much every pokemon booth i saw was at least 50 percent sports cards it wasn't just pokemon there was nobody almost nobody maybe one booth or two booths that i saw in this entire effing show that was just dedicated to pokemon i'm sure they were out there i'm sure i missed some because i was only there for like a day and a half but it was absolutely insane how massive this place was. Um, I'd say probably 5X Eclecticon in size. Like, it was absolutely ins- absurd. Maybe 4X, 5X, the number of tables, the number of sections, the number of booths. Like, absolute insane. Like, I was turning, like, I'm really good sense of direction, so I was able to get it down after walking through a little bit. My wife was turned left right upside down had no clue where we were going ever um but yeah i think that's the main issue is the the gatekeeping of just the old vendors coming back in um it's not like a first come first serve basis it doesn't seem like i could be wrong correct me if i'm wrong but it seems like everyone that went there last year they do get the first shot to come back and they don't not come back because this is the biggest show the this is the national sports car convention and (laughs) it was effing packed so the, so the actual Pokemon card sections, you, you mentioned they were there with sports cards. Do you think there were people there specifically trying to grab Pokemon cards? Yeah, there was a think, bunch of us there. <laughs> uh, uh, literally like a market yep. there for it. So, yeah, yeah I mean, that speaks yeah. volumes to it. Yeah, and I can just picture like what I was, I could picture there was a, at least the one or two Pokemon boosts. Um, now I can, I remember seeing them and just outside of them, like there's kids sitting on the floor trading all the pet Pokemon. I sat down on the floor and started trading with these kids. Um, and then one of the kids pulls out a $20,000, um, black Lotus, but <laughs> he wasn't too much of a kid. Apparently <laughs> but, he, he looked really young, but he had a nice $20,000 signed Christopher Rush, black Lotus. Um, so yeah, there, it was pretty cool to see all the different Pokemon collectors. Like, when you walk into the main lobby, that was the coolest part. Like, the main lobby was this big area, and everyone that wasn't in the National was sitting in there with their slabs out trading, like, at a trade night, just the entire day. And most of the people were younger kids that were doing this trading, and most of them had some Pokemon mixed in with all of their sports slabs. Like, it, most of them wasn't just all sports slabs. Like, the kids... The sub twenty year olds, most of them had like a Charizard slab or some rant, something splashed in there, you know, just a peak interest from other traders. Seemed Bus- like biz- business in the front, party in the back, right? Yep, yep, yep. When you when you're looking at the cases, yeah, I mean, I, I could imagine kids just generally be excited about anything fun and and um, shiny and you know cool to look at. I, I know. Kids love Pokemon, like just just in general, they love it. They love the games, the show, the cards. You know, they all like the plushies, that kind of stuff. So uh, it is definitely targeted towards them. The majority of the IP, I feel like, but also like kids love sports. They play baseball at school. They play football yeah. at school. They play all that stuff. So I, I, it makes a lot of sense what you say, and I, I could definitely picture it. It's not surprising. Um, I wonder if. They had to make like hard choices between one card or the other, like what they would, which would they would choose. If they had like a sports card worth like fifty bucks and a Pokemon card worth fifty bucks, which would you give up? And which would yeah, which would you keep? I think that'd be that'd be interesting to to kind of test them on. Excuse me, but yeah, yeah, hmm. interesting. Um, before I before I continue going on the national, we got to talk about our next week's spicy topics. Let's do it. You want me to go first? Um, yeah. All right. Uh, you won. Tag. Tag the grading company. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Stop. <laughs> 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 do we need, really do we need to edit this a... out this week? <laughs> oh my god. Tag the grading company is gonna be a top three Pokemon <laughs> card grading company <laughs> in 2025. <laughs> Okay, my spicy topic. Um, Tag is the birth child of a hobbyist and not a real business. What was that? Say it again. I said Tag is the birth child of a hobbyist and not a real business. I said it. I can respect that, but all right. Um, now we got to move on to this next segment. I almost forgot about it. Uh, asking a British man about a sports. Co- sport. Oh, geez. You, uh... what about that? <laughs> oh, I didn't do any research at all. Uh, we got, we got, hope you like basketball. You like basketball, Oak? How's basketball on your, uh, you good with basketball? Anyways. Michael, Michael Jordan's a basketball player. Right? He played sports yeah. ball, but it's a, it's a same thing. Go. Yeah. Do you know what a triple double is? That's drugs. We're talking about drugs. Right now. That's not basketball. Tri- That's definitely triple drugs. double is a basketball term. What the hell does it mean? Triple double. It is triple double. What do you think it means? It's when you take three steps with your left foot and two steps with your right foot and then dunk it. You got the bunt one, right? You don't know what a triple double is? I mean, it literally sounds like you're going to hand it to me in a baggie. Like, I don't know. I don't know what it could mean. Not even close. Triple. Definitely not in a baggie. Score. Maybe it's something to do with a score. So, like, a triple score is... If you're past that line, you get three points. Is it when you get two three-pointers? No. They, so a triple triple double is when you get. I was trying to be get, serious with that one. Is when you get double digit scores on three different categories: scoring, rebounds, assists. You get double digits, like ten of each. You get ten goal, ten points, ten assists, ten rebounds. That's triple double. Why do you get points it, for assisting? You get. So it's not a point. It's you get one assist. Or if you, so, if you get ten assists in the game, that's great. If you get ten rebounds, ten assists, and ten points, that's a hell of a game. That's a triple double. A triple double is like a category. Does it win the get. game? It doesn't win the game, but some usually when people drop triple doubles on people, that dude had a hell of a game, and they likely won it. Okay, so it means it was probably a good game. So I'm imagining, like in soccer football you would get a hat trick you're probably having a pretty good game if you scored a hat trick like most games if i had to pull data i'd say most games where someone scored a hat trick they probably won that game so it, it sounds related to that um i think i get it thanks for educational yeah got basketball so we did baseball softball the bunt thing and then we did basketball okay so just to give you an example, um, okay, the player that won the NBA uh, championship, Nikola Jokic, the Joker, um, he had 29 triple doubles last season. And that's maybe a third, not even a, about a third of the games, uh, one of the most dominant players in the league. So he, it's not something he did every game, but <sighs> I'd say probably on average they won those games. That seems like he's he's like a super active, very like – Busy player if he's doing that much that often. Yep. Thank and you yeah. For, uh... Go on. I, I was just going to say, like, that to what you're saying, like, probably indicative of success, right? <laughs> like, if you're that busy yeah. doing that much stuff, you're probably winning the game. You, you, I, I can't imagine, yep. like, if, you, if you're doing that, that you're the, you're the team that is sitting back and just getting, um, getting beat. So cool. Yeah, just getting your cheeks clapped is basically what was happening. Um, yeah. So yeah, the national first thoughts versus collect commons. Absolutely, it's like I said, it's it's like ninety five percent sports and memorabilia, and 
mm-hmm. all these companies trying to sell you their product, like corporate companies. There's a, there's like corporate row, Panini, Tops, uh, all this. V Friends had a booth there, but uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of different those, those companies. Do, baseball cards doing what? Product, selling, promoting. That's it. Cards. Cards. Yep. Like uh, Upper Deck was there. They were giving out, I think, free packs. Um, they had, they had like, I saw F one there. I think it was Upper Deck. I believe it was Upper Deck. They were giving away F one packs that had like the National Sports Card Convention on each card, which was pretty cool. No way. Stuff like that was pretty sweet. So, um, hmm. yeah, and I, yeah, I got a like even at CGC they're giving away free things. I got a free sample graded card. Like it was graded in a sl- in a slab, and it just said S A on it for sample, which was pretty cool. Um, they got you that hat, that hat from PSA, which was not really free, but all I had to do was vault an item at no minimum value, so I could vault a five dollar card and I get a free hat. So hmm. that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it was it was awesome. I uh, very overwhelming, very packed. The carpet, having carpet there definitely helped the knees. Let me tell you, my knees mm-hmm. at Eclecticon, dog shit, just completely wrecked after one day of standing on concrete, walking or standing. It's like a warehouse, um, isn't it? Yep. At Eclecticon, there was a lot more padding and carpeted areas. Uh, there was, of course, concrete some spots, but there was a lot more different variation there. Um, air conditioning was dog shit on the first day and again apparently the day before on thursday it was non-existent so i got there the day after and it was not great i was sweating by just walking around wasn't it Um, like 140 degrees or something crazy right you guys got melted yeah it was it wasn't that bad it was on saturday when i was there it was like 95 degrees 94 degrees something like that um no, that was Friday. Friday was pretty bad. But yeah, Saturday was not bad at all. It was like cooler temperatures. The AC was working better, it seemed. They had put fans in the right spot. But mm-hmm. the number of kids, seeing the number of kids there was awesome. There was a lot of effing kids there, uh, especially on Saturday when there was uh, nobody, their parents weren't working. They could take them there. The number of kids involved That's in like awesome. sports cards and all that stuff, just hustling these cards is really cool to see. Um, crazy it is awesome. to see them wheeling see them wheeling dealing and i know it's similar like you see them at collect cons i saw them at, there was a bunch of kids into pokemon wheeling and dealing um which is really cool really cool to see um the psas the bgs the cgc were all grading cards on site um mm-hmm. uh, pretty pretty quickly uh as far as that goes cgc you, by far was the cheapest option did you grade any i wanted to i was gonna um, I had a card two grade, but I couldn't stay until Sunday end of show. I was leaving Saturday, so oh, I yeah, wasn't an up. option for me. Yep. But I had a perf I had a I had went up to a booth, which was pretty cool. Like I had only did this to like three booths the entire time. I went up to the booth. I was like, Hey, do you guys have any Ellie De La Cruz cards? And he's a Cincinnati Reds player, if you don't know who he is. And the guy's like, No, sorry. They're selling like hotcakes. I walk away. I walk 15 feet away. This dude comes up to me. Hey, you, I've heard you looking for Ellie. Um, so he just overheard me at the booth. And he's like, one second, I know a kid. He calls this guy. The kid walks over. He's like 12. He walks up to me. He's like, hey, I just got this card pre-graded. Like literally 60 seconds later, this kid walks up to me. I don't know how he's so close. <laughs> he walks up to me with his card. He's like, I got, I got this card pre-graded by some random company there at the at the national that pre-grades cards for way too much money um i think more than the cost of grading at cgc uh i think it was like 40 dollars for him to pre-grade this card Jesus Christ. they so it was pre-graded a 10 who knows if it's actually 10 I, i'll give it a little bit i'll be like okay it's got to be at least a nine then um otherwise yeah. this company shouldn't be in business so it pre-graded 10. The dude asked for like 400 bucks. I got him down to, I bought it for 350. Um, so really cool. Bowman numbered to 225. I was going there wanting an Ellie De La Cruz rookie card. Um, it was the national. I had to buy a sports card. That was the guy I was chasing. Otani's out of my price range. 
but that's a hell of a one probably to be buying right now. That dude is a monster. So that was really cool to get that. I would have loved to get that card graded, but I didn't have time. It would have been sweet. Yeah, I mean, Ellie, obviously, a uh, big one. And you said Bowman. Was it the Chrome Sapphire? What like is there? I know there's so many different variations of that stuff. I'm still trying to learn about it, but do you yes. remember what it is? <laughs> does it does it have like a label on the pre grade thing? Yeah, it does. I'm just gonna pull it out now. I'm curious. Is that an arm's reach? On what it is, because that feels like a lot of money. Shout must out be to pretty sp- cases. Yeah, pretty special. Oh, we'll talk about those later. Um, so there's my sample uh, Jake Fromm rookie card. Oh, it's a sports one. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't yeah, think I've ever any... seen a, a sports sample one, only Pokemon ones. Oh, well. All right. So it is in here somewhere. There it is. Oh, I got. So I got a handful of cool cards. Bought some uh, Steve Eisman rookie cards. This is the Ellie I bought. Oh, geez. Yeah, this is Sapphire, right? Raw review. The company's Whoa. on the back, it looks like. DCI. Nope. No idea. Yeah, me either. A- so, M- but... NBA type situation, I guess. Yeah, um, and they were there. <laughs> Carlos they were there a shit ton of money. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're a big one. The uh, sports car guys in here, if you're listening, educate us because hopefully we didn't mess any of that up. Um, so you bought Ellie and you were looking for a tawny. Um, probably the- kind of looking, they're so expensive. Like this same card for Otani is probably two grand right at this rate already. I mean, the same ex- same numbered card, rookie G- Bowman. Jason Contrarian Cards just did a video about him. He collects him, and he's you know he's been collecting for a little while now. He's got qu- quite a few of his cards, and he like educated me a little bit on some stuff I didn't realize. But it sounds like he's one of like the biggest baseball players ever, right? Okay. Yeah, stats Feels- are lining up literally with Babe, Babe Ruth right now. It's it's crazy with the pitching. And he just had a game where he Big pitcher. started pitcher and he had a one-hit game shutout. He pitched the entire game, complete game, and then he played a second game in the same day. It was a doubleheader. Had a second game in the same day. He played as a batter, and he got two home runs as a batter in the same day. Like, that's – on fire. The dude's nuts. That's yeah. He's he caught fire like NBA, NBA jam style, but in baseball, it's probably there's, a slugfest version. Of there's it, just but. some people that are just incredible, right? That are just there isn't words. Yeah. You know, when you look, you, you just mentioned Babe Ruth. You, you look at that and look at, I mean Jordan, and there's just there's just so many David Beckham back in the day. There's just so many like sports people I can think of that Tiger Woods, like each and every sport, they just really sum up the spectacularness, spectacularness, if that's a word, of yeah. that sport. Like just how amazing you can be if you're the top 0.00001%. Like there will never be another Otani. Uh, like the way that his stats are right now. There might be someone better, there might be someone worse, there might be someone similar, but there's never going to be that guy again. Like what he's doing right now is very special and is creating history. And that's exactly why his cards are, are crazy. Like it, I can see it. I, you know, it's, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a believer in that stuff. I think it's really cool to see. I'm not buying any of it, but I think it's really awesome to see. Um, and if you can pull it, you know, if you can pull one of his cards or get him at a deal, like you say, you know, you're looking for some steals maybe. It's probably tricky right now. Everyone's eyes are on him, right? Everyone's searching for it. Oh, but... yeah. Yeah, you're not going to get any steals out of that guy, that card for sure. Like, It's got to be a I pull. was afraid to – yeah, I was afraid, just like in Pokemon, right? I don't want to buy raw cards from somebody who's got tons of graded cards on his booth. That was a scenario for a lot of sports booths. There is, yeah, like raw cards for sports is like super, super common. So I saw a bunch of Botanis, but 
they were surrounded by other slabs. I'm like, bro, what are we doing? Like, obviously this isn't going to 10. I'm like 99. I'm not even worth my time looking at this. Um, I, I saw, I saw a very relevant quote to that in discord over the weekend. And someone said, I'm not going to shout them out, but somebody said, um, I don't even like grading cards. I do it because that's what the market wants. Like they literally just grade the cards because then they can sell them at a higher price. And I feel like that really speaks to a lot of us, right? <laughs> the, yeah. the grading yeah. and selling. Like it really sums it up. Like I'd much rather sell raw cards if I could make money, the same amount of money in that, you know, and, and do that than go through the effort of mailing stuff, entering stuff anticipation of the time it's there is it going to hit the grade it comes back then i've got to deal with it when it doesn't hit a grade or if it does i've got to try and sell it and sit on it like there's so many like steps and um roll cards is you know much simpler but price wise it's where the money is i guess that really is where where things start to get a bit spicy so um yeah interesting that you, that you say that that they would have so many raw cards there, but I guess some people are just so many. They they so want many. it raw, like they 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 want it for the binder or the collection or the sleeves or whatever they're doing with it. I, I would imagine, especially the kids. I'd imagine a lot of those are probably not grading as much, you know, as as we are. They're just collecting binders and cards of the favorite whoever player. You said they had a. Like you said they had a bunch of slabs, though, right? Yeah, yeah, the kids, just because the kids are watching YouTube videos, sports card investor, card collector too, all these guys, and that's what they they speak is slab, so. Um, Become a standard. Yeah, it's pretty standard for sure, for sure. Um, yeah. I thought it was interesting. I had watched a sports card investor, like one of his vlogs from the National, just to see how that went. Seeing him there and in person, the wheel on a deal, was pretty cool to see. Um. Mm -hmm. He had a BGS nine Steph Curry card that was valued right around one hundred forty thousand dollars, and he went to he went to PSA to get it appraised to see if it or not appraised, but have them review it to see if it would cross to a PSA nine, and they said it likely would. And the value of that card in the PSA nine slab is higher, in his his opinion, and the person who bought the card off him. Um, Versus the BGS nine, which I thought was pretty interesting. I didn't know sports was similar to Pokemon, where PSA in the same grade number would yield a premium. Yeah, I think the the you said it was in BGS, right? Yep, BGS nine. I think I think the thing with BGS is like all the different grades above nine make nine feel like it's so many steps lower, almost. Whereas PC. P, uh, PSA, it's just one step lower. Yeah, yeah. It's there, there is so. Thing. Yeah, for that card, there was, I guess, a handful of nine fives. Only one PSA ten, no PSA nines. So that would have made it a pop oh, one PSA nine. Would have been a pop one with only one higher. Yeah. But it's interesting. I also thought that was interesting. Why the hell, if hmm. PSA is getting the premium? Why are all these in BGS slabs unless they were already optimized? Like maybe they were maybe in PSA slabs. I, I don't know because there's only one nine. I doubt they resub their their uh, their labels after cracking them. But I don't know. It's crazy that all of those went to BGS instead of PSA. Sports cards like BGS. Like it's not, maybe it's more liquid, even if it's less value. Like maybe it's oh, just a little easier to sell. But. I saw way more PSA there, um, for sure. Yeah. Like every vintage card, mostly all the Mickey Mantles, the Babe Roots. It was so cool seeing all this shit. It was so cool to see all these old ass cards. Like Mickey Mantle PSA nine was there. The nine point five in SGC is the card that sold for twelve plus million dollars. So a nine has got to be damn healthy. Yeah, yeah. A um, couple of illustrators were there. Pikachu illustrators, that is not not actual people drawing things. Um, yeah, it was uh, the, just the memorabilia, like the the high dollar value. All oh, the guys from the Golden Show were there. The Golden Show from Netflix. The uh, Ken Golden was there. 
Dave, 12 pack Dave and his other colleagues. So seeing those people in person was cool. <laughs> um, That's awesome. Yeah, it was, it was a lot. I got to see Gary V there. Didn't stop by the booth. It was a freaking cesspool over there. Oh, he was there too. Um, with the yeah, booth. he was at his booth. At his booth, the uh, That's cool. Bee friends booth. You a fan it, of Gary V's? That's cool that he was there. <laughs> That's not what I asked you. But really, though, like he didn't he didn't hire like a marketing person or whatever. Like he actually was what? like part of it. That's that's really awesome. I'm trying to be positive. <laughs> um, message received. <laughs> but yeah, I uh, it was cool to see him in person and just some of the other people there was really cool to see. Um, uh, seeing a box break happen live, I've seen not many in my life I, like uh an official box break i don't even know it might have been done on whatnot by island grown pokemon but yeah matt quinn from cgc was sitting next to him i was sitting next to gem mint pokemon and vanny flips pokemon was sitting there with me um and i showed up really late so i showed up at the end right when the graded cards were being wielded out so they had bo- broke this box 20 minutes later all these hollow cards were graded in their hand all the rares and hollows Wait, was We're this graded. part of the event? Yeah, it was part of the, the national sport. It was on the floor at the CGC booth. They did a box break. No way. Yep. So they did the first edition Neo Genesis, and the Lugia got the Gem Mint 10, not the Pristine 10, but it was pretty cool to see all that wow. happen just right there in front of me while I was sitting there. It was cool. That's crazy. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. I give me chills. That's a really cool experience yeah. to be a part of. Yeah, they also did a first edition base set box, first ed base. Um, only so when the auction, I believe, was all done through Heritage, but it was done by Blake's Breaks and all the things going on with those guys. But the the Heritage auctions was uh, I, I want to say it was like roughly seven to five thousand dollars, depending on where you bought your pack at. Um, and you had the mm-hmm. option to keep your pack sealed and just take it, just take your pack unweighed um i guess 32 of 36 packs were kept unweighed or kept in their on their person and i believe a zapdos and a blastoise was pulled out of the four packs so pretty cool that's surprising yeah it's pretty normally they they uh, want want the content they want to rip they want to push for that so so those packs went at a decent effing price, five grand for an unweighed first ed pack, where people are asking right now like three grand. Um, that's not bad. Like pe- the people that bought them, the, I know I talked to a few of them at the trade night, and they are not the content creator type. They are guys going for these set, first edition base sets and PSA tens and nines and. Um, so I think they're hoping they got a heavy pack and they'll probably rip the son of a bitch and uh, see if they had a grade worthy card. So overnight, opening a pack like that, like it's not very often yep. you can oh. just go out and do that kind of thing, you know. But that that price point is crazy. Built like I remember Logan Paul's first box he did, it was like 10 grand a pack. His second one was nutty when the freaking crypto guys got into it, it was like 24 to 30 grand a pack. Um, that was stupid. Um, the Vegas Pokemon Saves the World event, I want to say it was 10 grand a pack or so. Might be a little, or but that came with the base, Shadowless, and First Dead. All mm. three packs for Some one entry. Stuff in there. I feel like I remember Dan talking about buying into one and he paid like 5,500 a pack or something. I don't remember what that would make was. sense. That's where the 10 grand came from then because he. He had bought two entries, I believe, and then uh, his friend Nick had taken over the half of it or whatever. So that's where the 10 would make sense then. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That adds up. That's probably what it was then. But similar price. Not a terrible buy. A lot of of money for something pretty special. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like you were busy all over seeing a lot of things a lot of different things happening and um not too bored people just opening fusion strike etvs right <laughs> like if it feels yeah. like there was some pretty cool stuff happening yeah this was also my wife's first ever card event 
She's never been to anything in her Shout first out, experience Sweeney. as the national. She got to meet a handful of the people in the community. She got to meet Jake um, at the trade night, Jake and his girlfriend. And I'm going to shout out all the guys at lunch. Hopefully, I don't miss anybody. But Merck's Collectibles showed up. Uh, we had lunch on Saturday with um, also Lord Pokey Smoke, Ponga. Uh, Mr. Walrus was there. I'm going to miss a name, and I, it's going to piss me off. So I got to look at the table. My wife was sitting next to me. It was Brandon. Lord Pokey I think Smoke. Brandon was there, right? BB. Vandy flips Pokemon. No, Brandon wasn't there. Nope. He was not there. Um, he wasn't. Okay. Peak. Peak was there. Peak, not peak. peaked at yeah. you, but it was, uh, that was a group. And I got to see the pole father as I was leaving the show the last five seconds I was there. Um, so it was cool. It was, uh, good seeing everybody. Um, at a hell of a time. It was, my wife was like, she's excited for Collecticon now. She's like, I think I could do this. Her, her, her leg, she did not wear the right shoes. I told her like seven times before we went. I was like, wear effing comfortable shoes. And she picked these like cute flat shoes or whatever. It was not like a Nike walking shoe that she should, definitely should have had. So um, live and learn. Collecticon will be different because we'll be selling there. So standing more so. And actually, we bought a, a carpet remnant to put next to my booth now to stand on that instead of the concrete. Which that's would be small. really nice. Yeah, that's really small. That shit wrecked me standing on that concrete for two days straight. So my dog just came yeah. in to say hi. Sorry. Yeah, I, no. I have um, I have a uh, uh, what do you call it? Like a memory foam or whatever. Like a yep. I don't know. There's whatever that fancy word is. Like one of those masks. Or like one of yeah, like when I'm stood places, at, you know, sink or desk or whatever, I could see that being like a big help. Because I mean, when we were in Orlando, I don't remember sitting down. I don't even know if we had a seat. I remember standing up the whole time. Yeah, and it's pretty much the whole it's day until awkward dinner. Just sit down while you're selling things too. It's like, yeah, it, it's passive. It's not. You're not They're trying not to sitting get down. sales. You're not. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's better to be standing when you're selling things. And I think the carpet thing will help. Um, and it's something mm -hmm. I can just put in my freaking luggage. It was $5 from Aldi. So yeah, that's a bike. W that's a W for sure. Um, Easy peasy. I should, buy, I should bring a bunch of them and sell them for like 20 times the price. So people would buy them guaranteed. <laughs> just go, just w walk around in circles around each of the <laughs> selling carpet remnants. Exactly. <laughs> I'd do extremely well. That'd be pretty right. funny. I think that I could is. do it though. So um, you said a couple of things about what you were looking for and what you saw. Like, was there any like special pickups? And I know you you, you got the uh, the Ellie. Was it the Ellie that was Bowman? Um, was yep. there anything that like you wasn't expecting to pick up or trade or like what what else did you play around with? So I'm a Detroit guy from the uh, from the the roots. So I got three Steve Eisman rookie cards. He had like a stack of these just on his desk like this. I was like, "Is that all Steve Eisman cards? Can I take a look at it?" He picked them up and he's like, "Yeah, here you go." So twenty dollars, twenty dollars, twenty five dollars. Um, here locally at a Detroit card show all day, I can sell these for forty forty five bucks, no problem. Um, one of the most sought after cards in the area for sure, even for like newbie collectors, just to get a Steve Eisman rookie card. So that was pretty cool getting those. Um, pick these up like pack fresh uh, Japanese 50. I just paid full ask 15 and $30, both pack fresh, guaranteed PSA 9, possibly a PSA 10. And then I had got this card. Shining Mew for 60 bucks. He had it listed at 80. I paid 60. Um, that was it's a it had like 95% sports cards. It has like a, a definitely it's not a 10, it's probably like a PSA 6 or a CGC 7.5 or something, but 60 bucks solid, solid price. I'd, I'll pay that, I'd pay that every day of the week. Absolutely brilliant, brilliant artwork. Yeah. I mean, just legendary, like gorgeous. Yeah, yeah I love that. I, uh, it's really pretty. I thought it was interesting. 
there was a couple booths also that only accepted goods and services. They even being there in person, they were like cash or goods and services if you're paying through PayPal. Um, I know some people are limited via business and you can only accept goods and services, but um, I thought always most, a lot of cases, people would have some work around Cash App, Venmo, something, Zelle to get around it. But it was a couple booths yeah. where that were like that. And a couple booths were cash only. Like the one I got, the Shining, the Shining Mew, that was cash only. Just cash like yourself. King. Yep, Cash is King. Oh. I, I think um, the, yeah, the PayPal thing, it, you get to like a threshold and then they force you to like not be able to take anything personal, right? Like you can only take goods and services yeah. at one point. I think I've heard that in a couple of people talking about it. That's probably exactly what it is, but I have no clue what the threshold is at all. So, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of cards, I would imagine, to get to that point. Yeah. Yep. Anything we missed? Um, yeah, a couple things. Um, <laughs> you want to mention something about the hidden cases? So I did hear that eBay hid some Zion cases around the event, but didn't market it or tell anyone. I guess they hid cases with like some like, pretty special cards in, like nice Zion cases for people to find as like Easter egg type things, but like literally didn't tell anyone. So like, I guess a few people found them that like got in the know from people from eBay or whatever yeah. and found them. But I thought that was like really interesting that that wasn't marketed. I feel like that's like such an exciting, cool thing to say, explore, go explore, walk around, look, talk to people, ask people for clues, like, you know, do something with that and you get a reward for it. You not only get the case, which is fantastic getting the Zion case, but there was some pretty special cards inside, apparently at sports, but still like there was pretty special cards inside. Um, I forget what it was um, that they were talking about, uh, but still like, why, why, why wouldn't you do something with that? That That's was super weird. interesting to me. Create, like a mob rush though. People just running frantically. Maybe through That's the place, it. But... Maybe they were, they were concerned about like, the practicality of it you know everybody trying to do that instead of focusing on you know on, on, on what the actual show was but i, I don't know yeah. i don't know who found them or you know what came of that if anyone does know you know educators i think it'd be cool to to explore that and see what cards they were and um uh, and what the result was how many there was i've never heard of that happening before and especially ebay doing it and not telling people with Zion, which is you know both great companies, feels like a missed opportunity at some level of marketing. You know, maybe we'll get a video about it, telling the story. Who knows? Yeah, I wonder if like when you open the case, it says like "Congratulations." It had to have said something, otherwise you would assume it was lost and found. It had to have some paperwork in there that says, "Hey, congrats! You now found this mystery box. You are the winner." Or something that would. I'd like to yeah. see the picture of that memo. I I like to think it would be that tied with there being people that know, like it, whether it be next to a CGC stand or something. There's just a random case there, and they have to like ask questions, like make an activity out of it rather than just yeah. an Easter egg hunt. Like, hey, do you know where the design case is? Uh, like unlock a code or i don't know something with it i don't know maybe maybe it's just too much maybe there's just too much involved with doing that kind of stuff that's why i didn't tell anyone and it was just literally like a treasure hunt like go find a zion case that's unattended and steal it <laughs> i mean the, the whole thing is like a little weird and shaky but at the same time that's kind of fun like the idea of it, of finding one that like no one else has seen and yeah. potentially get a prize i mean it's it's cool so yeah, I wanted to call that out. I don't know if I didn't know if you heard of anyone there that had found one or if that had been spoken about, you know, whispers or anything. No, not at all. That's pretty interesting. That would have been cool. I did see Zion there, their whole booth. Um no graded guard booth. No graded guard. And I think hmm. part of the problem is 
like the gatekeep, not gatekeeping. I wouldn't call it gatekeeping. Just like the the loyalty the of boys. prior years fans. Like, yeah, you're just yep. You're not gonna get a spot. I feel like the booth sections are five grand a piece or something like that. Um, I can't recall what a full section is, but I heard five thousand yeah. get thrown around. Not cheap. something like that. So a little bit more than a collecticon, like three x for a section. So four x. Yeah, and that's interesting. Pressure. I literally saw videos posted from there with slabs that had graded guards on them. Oh yeah, yeah, they were yeah, they were everywhere. Graded guards, honestly, they were being everywhere. Missed opportunity. Yeah, I think that was dumb yeah. for 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 them not to be wanting them to be there. I mean, it looks Discount fantastic. Discount code right? linked down below in the description. Seriously, that card, yeah. like that artwork, the color theme, you know, people talk about the labels, you know, and stuff, but like the actual slab matching, given give a whole color theme, it looks really good. It does look nice. I've seen a couple that it looks weird when it really doesn't match, but. Looks good with a black too. Looks looks good with a CGC black. Yeah, that's sharp. Crispy. It does. It does. It does. It looks beautiful. Yeah. So miss miss one there. Anything else on um, national that we didn't hit? Yeah, we should talk about tag grading. Um, What's that? <laughs> honestly, I just wanted to mention it briefly. Um, not sponsored by any means, but I did see their booth, and it was the one of the only corporate booths I walked to. I had never heard of them before the national. I, I don't know if I've been mm-hmm. in a shell or what, but um, they don't seem like a big company. Like I've heard a tons, probably because they don't do a lot of Pokemon yet. Um, mm-hmm. He t- They told me their sales guy told me they don't do round corner Pokemon cards, only square corners because it's same as sports cards, but they're going to be breaking into it. Cause obviously the market's there. It's the number one uh, type of card graded by PSA currently. So, um, yeah, it'll be something they're getting into, but I just thought the slabs look pretty cool. It's uh instead of being a label, it's like etched into the plastic and it's just the same clear slab as like a CGC slab. So it was pretty interesting. Um I'll be taking a look at them just for giggles and sharks, but they look clean. Son of a bitch look clean. I'll give them that. Did you did you get the free grading coupon? thing will you no. take it no and i did i asked the guy i challenged him a little bit I, I was like hey what's your gem rate i was like how many tens do you guys give out and i was just direct um he's like yeah you've kind of beaten around the bush didn't give me a real answer i was like well psa is about 40 percent um if you look at their the history right and modern yeah. you could say it's probably fuck it. it's probably like 80 percent now for some of the modern cards are getting graded um but 40 percent on Saturday, he's like, "Yeah, we're not quite there. We're not, we're not really that high. So it's probably like the old GGC. If I had to guess, probably somewhere around ten percent getting tens. Yikes. Conservative. Yeah. So kind of sus. I'm not a huge fan of that. Obviously, I'm liking the new, the new CGC grading scale. Lots of tens. Tens. You get a ten, and you get a ten. Big fan of that. So." Yeah, I mean, for those ones that look clean. Yeah, yeah, it looks cool. The ones, the ones that are truly gem mint, not necessarily perfect, like they got rid of, but um, the gem mint ones, like the mint, like just give them, just give them the grade. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh so, yeah, no, it was good. Hope to see you at the next one. The next one is in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I don't even know where Ohio is. I gotta, I gotta get educated. Here. Okay, it's in we'll the armpit of the United States. Well, also, house we... home of one of the worst college football teams of all time, <laughs> Ohio State. Yeah. Um. Well, at least it's not the ding dong of America, like like I'm, <laughs> like Florida. I'm sat on like something that needs to scrape. Um. Anyway. So the one ring, we've talked about it a couple of times. We've gone through it on a couple of different episodes. 
We opened packs together on my channel. For the, those of you that didn't watch it, we even uh, opened some old and new um, Lord of the Rings packs. And who just bought the one ring, the PSA 9? Want, want me to guess? Yeah. Uh, give me, oh, my first hint or first guess would be Post Malone. First guess. <laughs> Shut up. Is it? <laughs> yes. Is it really? Yes, he freaking bought. Of course. Like, if there's going to be someone, I was dumb not thinking that that, <laughs> that could happen. Like, if there's someone with a lot of money that's been shining light recently on magic, it's Post Malone, right? Like, see. like, he's the one I think of now when I think of this kind of stuff. He's bought some some bangers lately. Um, yeah. did you see any numbers for what he purchased it for? Do you want to take a no, stab at that? I didn't, I honestly didn't know of the purchase until you mentioned it was purchased and you didn't give me a name. Okay, so that was a good guess, though. You already didn't know we had a one million in US, two million in Spain, whatever it was. Where yep. do you think and he I, laid with the purchase price? This person, I, I honestly, I wouldn't, I'd be shocked if it went over two million. But the way you worded it makes me believe it's over two million just because of the way you worded it. So I'm going to guess 2.4 million. 2.6. Bitch. That was pretty close, too. Damn. More money than is in my bank account. That's for sure. Really? 2.6. Million dollars. I would need to use oh, a credit card. Gross. No, seriously. I would. I would. I would. I would need to liquidate some assets to raise that kind of funds. Couple. He. <laughs> Two point six million. Insane. Damn. I mean, if you crazy rich and it's the only one of something in the world. How do you put a number on it? I don't. I don't know how they came to two point six. I'd imagine there was some form of negotiation. But that's quite the purchase. So, um, Puggy Fresh, thank you for letting me know about that. I got to shout you out because you are the one that, that that told us about it. And I'm excited to see if he does something with it. I know Logan Paul made a big fuss about you know you know going into the fight with it around his neck and stuff. Very curious to see what uh, Posty does on social media, you know, with his followers and stuff, like what things. Yeah, there you go. Um, this was the first video released a day ago of this mm -hmm. card outside of this graded slab. Yeah, he was by the person who opened it. He was the guy that opened it. Yeah, he looks like he's shaking. He is definitely shaking in this video. But yeah, it, I would. Cool. It, all the comments on that. This is a TikTok. Of course, he posted a TikTok, but of course, this gentleman, another shout out his name, Brooke Trafton on TikTok, yeah. the guy who opened it, uh, the comments are pretty brutal. They're like, oh, no wonder I got a PSA 9. Just look at the way he's handling the card. But that's $2.6 I mean, million dollars in his effing hand. Disgusting. Might wrong. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, life changing. Million out of a freaking collector box or whatever it was. Won, won the lottery. I mean, literally, like he, he he won the lottery. That's uh, you and your family for life if you're smart about it. Isn't that just, the most life. expensive Magic the Gathering card to ever sell? Have we seen? I don't publicly. I don't uh, know enough about the Alpha or Beta. Because I, I, I know. I don't know. Post Malone also bought a Christopher Rush artist proof mm -hmm. signed. Black Lotus BGS nine for almost a million dollars. So I find it hard to believe there was something that is surpassing this ultra ultra 2023 modern card. This will the, happen again. Wait, wait, wait. The first no one of it. one. It was the first one of one they've done though. Like that is yeah. despite last. friend whatever the blah 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 alpha this that. It's Lord of the freaking Rings, right? And it's the first one of one magic card. There's there's if nothing the, yeah. nothing more special 
in stat wise than that stuff for me. Like it's it's the creme de la creme. If there's going to be a card that's going to be the highest selling for me when I look at Magic, it's that card. What if they have a one on one Stanley Cup card come out for Magic Gathering? You know what you know what the Stanley Cup is, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I got Tampa down the road. I would watch the playoffs yeah. in person. Now they know yeah. what the Stanley Cup looks like. That's for damn sure. Yeah. Um, the. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of variations that could come out, but it's still the first. So, do you think like a one of one, Orcish Bowmasters, if it's the second ever card that pops off as a one of one? Would this card sell for a million dollars? No. No shot? I don't give a fuck about Orcish Bowmasters. You think Masters. it's just because of the Lord of, Ring, Lord of the Ring attachment? It's the ring! The, yeah. but the, think, Every book and movie covered? is about that ring. The whole IP of it, the whole setup. J.R.R. Tokens life revolved around making stories of that ring for years Agreed. and years and years. How, and now how much card. of how much of the two point six though was just attached to it being one on one? Like, what could this sell for as a one on one? If it was the only one in the set, like that's what I was wondering. I was like, how much is it just prominence of it being in the ring versus the one on one? Obviously, it's the combination of both, which is massive. But mm, I, think... I don't. I feel like. Achieving one million would be tough on any other one on one personally, unless it's something else crazy like that. I think you might be right, and I don't know if they're going to do it soon. I know a lot of people have said, like, oh, they'll start throwing them out there and doing it now. They know, like, you know, people get hyped, but I feel like I feel like that'd be a really dumb business decision to, to flood to flood that stuff, you know, and, and get too much of it yeah. out there. I don't know. I, I, who knows? I wonder nobody, how, nobody knows. Obviously, they bought the rights to use Lord of the Rings in this set. I wonder how much of the right they have. How many times could they do this? Or was it limited to one printing? Um, I would be, It'd be funny if the Lord of the Rings, they gave up the rights for like one set and then come back, talk to us if you want to do it again. And now they're going to... They saw what... <laughs> Like the mm-hmm. people that sold the 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 rights for the one set, they're gonna be like, "All right, let's let's dance." Now that you, we saw that what we did for your card game, we're gonna add some zeros onto the back end of this son of a bitch, and they'll they'll probably write it. They'll write the check. I could see Lord of the Rings having multiple sets inside of Magic the Gathering, and it'll do well. Sure. Yeah. It it would 100%. it would do it would do the well. lore the lore plays in so well like Dungeons and Dragons Lord of the Rings even Stranger Things The Walking Dead all of that type of sci fi horror plays into in my opinion f- plays in well it uh, and we just saw saw resale va- resale value two point six million people are just gonna see it as another another lottery like it's there. Yeah. Like people have seen how well it can succeed with it, so yeah, I could see, I could see there being hype and, and excitement about any variation they did with it. If they did, I don't know. I know they they're doing a Jensen Impact, um, the game. I, I think I on my phone. You know, I don't I haven't played it much, but uh, the game that I've downloaded a couple of years back. It's been it's been a while since I've played around with it, but it's like an anime style kind of game thing. I know uh, Mason said that they're releasing a, a variation of that. So sounds like they're just going straight back into other IPs, working with other IPs and doing it. But I don't think it's off the table. Maybe they do it once a year. Maybe they do a Christmas Lord of Rings one. I don't know, Hobbits <laughs> and Santa hats. You, you never know. Like uh, if if they go. have if they have the creativity. Uh, the creative rights, whatever the phrase is, to to do it, they could just play around and do whatever the hell they want and just make money from it. But it's a, it's a special card. What it symbolizes is pretty something pretty special. Um, you getting your graded? The one you pulled out of your pack? 
I don't even I don't even remember what I pulled. I need to go back. I haven't looked at them since. I need Jesus. to go back. I got a whole pile of them. I need to go back to the one ring that you pulled out of your vintage 1995. Oh, yeah, the OG one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I need to take a look. I haven't looked at them really for quality, but yeah, I'll I'll take a look. That I think I'll probably grade it just so it's preserved. And I know it's like you know, it's kosher. Um yeah, pretty awesome. Thank you for that. That's pretty special to to do. Enjoyed that a lot. Um what about Um, I did yeah. No, I was going to say, I shipped you a box to your PO address, too. By the way, it's there. It delivered. Recently? Yeah, with the Lord of the Rings cards from our box break. So go check that out. Ooh, okay. Thank you. I'm guessing I said there was one that I wanted. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Um, I'm, 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 I don't know bit. which ones. Yeah, I didn't Crazy watch thing. back the effing four-hour long, whatever it was, long video, but I just... Took a shot in the dark. I got to readjust. Yeah, and there was, you had some pretty, I mean, every card I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. This is amazing. This is amazing. I just felt myself repeating myself over and over. There was just, the artworks were out of this world. That's cool. Yeah. I'm really impressed by Magic with what they did with that set. It, I, I can't, I can't overstate it. It's, it's fantastic. Um, although, how are you feeling about Locana? Because I'm not so excited about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not. I don't think I'm going to buy any. If I buy anything, it'll be a box. But I thought it was interesting. I actually went to a local game store in Lowell, Indiana. Shout out to mm-hmm. them. There's only one. If you Google game store, it's only one there. But they are going to be a lorcana hub for playing the game which i thought was interesting because i asked them about it because they they had just quadrupled in size by getting a larger space by moving down down the uh, road um i was like this is a really nice space are you guys going to be doing any lorcana because i was curious um after everything i've heard from mason cardinal gaming shout out to him Mm -hmm. go check out his channel for all the latest updates on everything lgs so but yeah this shop actually told me that they're Planning on getting a handful of Lorcana, being a store, a, a, an official play store. And I thought it was interesting because, like, all the different things I've heard, and some people are getting pulled and they're not getting any mm-hmm. allocation. People have got allocation. It's like you're getting effing wrecked. So they didn't seem to have any insight of how much they were getting yet, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, I haven't heard of anybody yet who said, Yeah, I'm getting a piss ton of this or whatever. So It'll be interesting to see how yeah. hard they get slapped. I haven't either, actually, thinking about it. I haven't... Yeah, I don't I don't know what... It sounds from, like, like you're saying, you know, with Mason, it sounds like they're focusing on almost like hubs, like places where they, they know it's going to be played and they're going to sell high volume, they have a lot of traffic. It sounds like they're going to focus on, like, bigger stores and hubs like place, places to send the majority to and not worry so much about locals and randoms and um like actual stores like the actual stores the heart of the community which is like super disappointing because i feel like that's sort of it's got to be a big like a big opportunity surely like like having it in regular stores like normal stores in towns and cities that people would go in like that's where you would go to check for that right yeah yep i mean online first probably you'd check to see like do they sell this kind of stuff and then you'd go in and and just grab it have it installed i don't know um it'd be it it, it'd be cool if it takes off to the the game function the the play-in but i don't see it being anything like what we have right now with the with the few we already have quite a few different things going on with games. I don't feel like even the best ones are even that popular. Yeah, it's it's tough to be innovative because there are so many effing different ones. They all have different mechanics right. from each other, which is why you can't really um, patent game mechanics because there, there's only so many that can exist in a yeah. physical TCG. Um, but yeah, no, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. 
you plan on buying any or no? It didn't sound like you're any interest. I mean, I was. I, I like the idea of having a box. I know we talked about it quite a while, a while ago. Yeah. I really do like the idea of it. I think it would be cool to open and see the cards and be a part of that first box, like that first set that they do. Like, I feel like it's a pretty <laughs> special moment, yeah. you know, for Disney. Um, Disney is a big client of of ours at work. Like, the, 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 we have a very close relationship. So, like, I have like almost like a bit of a personal connection to Disney too. Where like, I want it to succeed. I think it's I think it's cool, despite the weird stuff Disney has done in the past. I think right now, I don't I don't <laughs> think they're terrible. Um, it would be cool for it to succeed. I, I think I'm. Uh, what would be the phrase? I'm like optimist, optimistic, um, ho- hopefully pessimistic or something. I don't know what the phrase would be. Like, I don't think it's going to do well, but I would love it to do well. Whatever that yeah. phrase is, it's late. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, yeah. I also, I haven't really seen any of the artwork. Like I really haven't done much exploration of that. I don't know if there's too many leaks. I've tried to avoid it because, yeah, I, I don't love spoilers. I'd like to see it closer to when it gets released. Uh, I think it's fun, like experiencing it with people when they open things and stuff. So I, I would like to see some of that stuff closer to the time. Um, but I imagine there's some pretty cool artworks. If if they're gonna do the first set, it's got to be something special. Yeah. Yep. So having said what you just said about wanting to be no spoilers, opening as close to the release as possible, this Obsidian Flames drop that Pokemon's doing is the closest we've we've had to no spoilers because the Japanese ones drop just now. Like it just became available just now. Obsidian Flames just now had pre-release. Like the weekend after the National or no, the same weekend of the National was the pre-release. So, it was, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, I got the pre-release kit two days ago, and I could have technically got cards graded at the freaking National of that set, which is crazy. So um, this is the first time that I could remember in my three, four years being fresh into the hobby, watching everything going on, where mm-hmm. a Japanese set drops at the same time as the English one, and yet the English one is already a dud. What do you, what do you attribute to that? What are your thoughts? 151. I think if we didn't know the next set, Obsidian Flames would have been much more excitable. <laughs> but do you, do you think it's because the Japanese 151 already dropped and we know everything we need to know about the set? Or is it just mm. the speculation you think at the one, like, if it was still left to speculate? Yeah. Yeah, I think people are anticipating what 151 will do because of the because of what it is it isn't a regular set it isn't you know scarlet and violet really like it isn't really anything that's going on right now people are a bit bummed out about the last two sets right they're not excited about paul Deere. they're not excited about base scarlet violet that kind of stuff so obsidian i think the mentality is obsidian is just like another addition to that pile that's happening with modern stuff um, whereas 151, I think people are really separating it and putting it on a pedestal. Like, honestly, I think people just know it's something special. It has the first 151 Pokemon in it. Yeah. I mean, it's it's special. I guess a pretty cool set. Um, so I think that's, it's, pardon the pun, but it's dampening the flame a little bit for, for the Obsidian Flames. Like, yeah, I really think it is putting a damper on it, which is sad because it, I was excited. Like I was, you know, the last couple of sets, the big hitters have been trainer cards, <laughs> like not even real Pokemon cards doing that fantastic in those sets. Yeah. So I was excited yeah. to go. Like, I wanted Miriam. some Pokemon. Like, like, give me some. I don't want Miriam and Iona. Like, get, I want some Pokemon that are special and like cool and amazing artworks. And it looks like there's some in there, but people just. They want 151. I mean, that's what people are talking about. There's no spoilers for Obsidian Flame because no one's freaking talking about it. Nobody's talking about it. No one's spoiling anything. No one's stealing packs. No one's doing anything really 
that special. I mean, and there's been a couple of things. I know there was a case stolen or, you know, a couple of boxes of stuff stolen. 151 even, I think, has been stolen. But I know that generally there's a lot more conversation and talk about what cards are going to be in this set. What what do we think? What is this? What is that? There's a lot more like speculating and talking and going through ideas and Obsidian Flame, I haven't felt any hype. I haven't felt any excitement from anyone about it. Have you? Like, do you feel like there's 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 any kind of positivity about it? No, I think uh, like thinking back, uh, Darkness Ablaze, Champions Path, those couple of sets were pretty shit, pretty shit. Um, and even still today, those. Those packs on whatnot or wherever are selling extremely well. They're doing well on higher yeah. than the three ninety nine retail price. Just thinking, I don't even know the hits in Obsidian Flame, but Jesus Christ, it's got to be better than both of those sets. Like people are just not hyping it up because they know they're not making tons of money already. Right? Like they're. They're almost shooting themselves in the foot. I feel like most of the people hyping up sets are the ones selling it on whatnot or they're selling graded singles on eBay and stuff like that. So there's just not a lot of talk around it because they feel like it's going to be a bad set. But if you look back, there has been some lumps of heavy trash. Um, Battle Styles, everyone's like, oh, it's one of the greatest sets because of Tyranitar. Like Tyranitar, there's a few playable cards in there as well. City of Flames has Dragonite, Tyranitar, Charizards, like Charizard got the Yin Yang. So um I feel like it's gotta be more enjoyable to open the Darkness Blaze or my champion's path. So you get two reverses per pack. I don't know. It just seems like this modern stuff is even more enjoyable than what we had two years ago, a year ago. And there's just maybe more of it, or a lot of the flippers are just not excited about it, pumping it. But I do feel some of the 151, it it hurt us, Japan, getting it so far in advance because it's burnt out. Like, mm-hmm. prop 151, like, everyone knows it. And, of course, everyone's into it now because it's been out so long. They're, like, chopping at the bit for it. Um, so it definitely hurt Obsidian Flames because it just overlapped it for sure. Like, it's great Obsidian Flames and our Weird Obsidian timing. Flames coming out of the same time. That's great that those are coming out at the same time. I love it. I wish 151 did that, and Obsidian Flames didn't do that. I feel like if 151 came out at the same time, that would have been insane, like seeing how those two markets went off at the same time. Um, it, that would have been interesting. I hope they don't ever do it again the way they just did it. I hope it just isn't random or just make all of the freaking sets at the same time. Obviously, you're doing it now, so... I don't know. Pissing me off though. Maybe maybe that maybe that is it. I mean, honestly, like looking at the last couple of sets for Scarlet of Isla, you know, that we kicked off this generation with, there's been some really special artworks. Like even yeah. even some of the like more common cards, you know, some of the cards that I pulled that were worth a dollar or two, I was looking at them and I was like, this feels like it should be worth a lot more than it is. <laughs> Like there's some really special artworks on there, which makes me think they will end up being like that. I, I I honestly think it's really kicking off to be a fantastic generation in terms of artwork. It's just like the stonkers are trainers like uh, so far. I don't know what's going to happen with this next set. Uh, you know, Obsidian. Like really, what is going to be the top three or five cards? Um, Things just feel so different to Sword and Shield. It feels so different. It's like different atmosphere. The the cards yeah. are different. You know, we don't have yellow borders anymore. And the the Pokemon are ones that like we haven't heard of. And like there's there's so much change. And I think stuff has changed with it. Uh, uh, like attitudes and approaches and stuff. Like you say, people Oh, I'm not gonna make double my money t- tonight, like buying and selling this. Like, I'm not, I'm not interested. Like, it, I don't know. Just, just, just uh, it's for the collectors now. I think. I honestly think it's for the collectors, which should be a good thing, long term. 
yeah, collect, collectors and players. I feel like um, players, yeah, yeah, they're they're realizing they're the cheapest decks ever possible. Like even right. in the peak hype, you could make an S tier deck for like thirty dollars. <laughs> like you can get the the most common version of the S tier deck for dog cheap. Whereas like an S tier Yu Gi Oh deck, you're probably dropping. I don't even know anymore. Probably a K plus because yeah, some of those crazy. really powerful cards are only printed in a really high rarity. Like, could you imagine if, um, like the new Charizard EX full art card was the only version of that card printed, and all of the other ones printed were just eliminated, like. If the secret rare was the only one playable, that would that is where you would mash up collectors and and players. That would be insane. Um, because usually players aren't playing with foiled out decks like that, max foil, but I don't know. Not in Pokemon. Did you pre order any? I know you got the pre release. What? Like Obsidian Flames, like what what's the what's the play there? What are you doing with it? zero um i did get a one pre-release kit at the lgs but zero yep. plans of getting deep into it it's i don't know i'd look like i've always wanted to like open a box of everything that'll be cool i'd like to do that but no plans it's not one of those sets that i would stonk dog to the moon what right. 51 is but yeah no plans what about you um, I ordered a case of uh Pokemon Santa ETBs, and I'll probably oh, those are the that. Charmander ones, the Charmander promo, or no? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so those are dope, and it says Pokemon Center on the promo, it's pretty sick. Those are awesome for sure. If I bought anything, it would have been those, but I didn't, I didn't reserve any. It feels like the most fun, the most like kind of special even though they're expensive and you don't get a lot of cards in it whatever it just what it is i think it just symbolizes like fun and like the the cool parts of it um i've ordered one yeah. of each for whole scar on violet even 151 case. i ordered a case yeah so how many have been ripped so subject I, I have um one etb of scarlet violet base left and i have i haven't ripped any of the paldea evolved yet i've been really good oh very sober and well behaved two sets but i did i did rip uh scotland but yeah i was too excited it's the first one i i couldn't help myself um but yeah i'm gonna try and keep (laughs) keep on i'd like at one point maybe at the end of the generation we could you know do a live or whatever do something with one box of every set from the generation. It'd be cool to have one of every and do something with it. I think that'd be fun. Um, Sounds brutal. Yeah. I mean, there's not too many packs. Like ETBs. I think I could do it in less than 12 hours with how fast I am. Uh, Hell yeah. Yeah, that's that's one of the reasons I quit. I haven't bought ETBs in a minute. Um this is Stuff when they're there, sitting there, rip them sons of bitches open. I don't too easy. Not even drunk. I was sober. Rip them bitches up. Like I'm looking at this charger yeah. box. I'm like, that's like the only sealed thing I got in here. I was like, might as well rip that bitch, right? Like, <laughs> what about you sell one Charizard celebration <sighs> thing? Or... Shout out Java, Java Akuma, my coffee <laughs> demon friend. He um he did a quote. I clipped it in the Discord the other day. He did a quote on his video that I was catching up on, and he was talking about just ripping stuff just because, like, you, you, exactly what you said. It's sitting there, like, why not? Let's go. You know, you have a drink, you have a beer, don't have a beer, whatever. It's, it's sitting there. It's fun. Like, I'm not selling it. I'm not storing it forever. Like, screw it. Let's go. And I, yeah. that really, really, like, it tickled me. It was, it was funny. Yeah, because I definitely feel the same. I've ripped way too many things the past couple of years that I really shouldn't have ripped. Um, but it is what it is. It's fun. I've enjoyed it. It's part of part of the hobby. What do you What do you think of this um, Master Ball 
craziness. I know we've uh, we've seen some prices jump up a little bit. There's some pretty special cards. Um, I've seen some really nice ones. I like the starters. I like the um, some of the like pretty chilled out artworks. There's, I feel like there's a lot of artworks that are just regular, you know, verse hollows of of some of the the more basic and common um, Pokemon in the in the one fifty one set. But like they look really like cool, like really cool artworks. They don't look like cheap and quickly made like some of the stuff we've seen that like you know in the past that's made on a computer or made with I don't know Microsoft Paint or something. I feel yeah, like a good quality, am, but uh, what are you thinking with it? I'm a big fan. I'm just happy. I just thought about it. I'm like man, I hope there's not a Zapdos one of those. And there isn't there isn't luckily. There's an Articuno and a Moltres. Um yeah not every Zapdos was a it was a it was an EX in that set, so it didn't mm-hmm. get a regular standard card. But um, they're pretty better. dope. I I like the additional chase of there being one Master Ball per box, which is pretty cool. Like I doubt they'll do that in the US, but it would be pretty cool if they did. Um, I'm I guaranteed you mean? I, I'm, yeah. Do you think it was only done for the one fifty one set or? Did no, I don't think they did it for the Obsidian Flames, did they? Japan, it was just like a, a random thing, right? Just for that I'm, set. I'm not aware of it being done for that, but I mean, I also haven't poked at it. Like I really haven't looked too much, so yeah, yeah, I probably I can't speak I to that. I heard something about it. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah I I'm think pretty it's cool. sure it's a 151 chase. thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure, and it, and obviously, like like you say, even like one. Of, one a box like that's pretty rare it is and you you're not getting like how many cards are in that set you know, like you got to assume i'd say 115 120 of those are reverse rareable so one in 120 boxes you're going to get one of each of those like mm-hmm. on average you got to open 120 boxes to get one of each which is absurd so and it ain't gonna happen. That's that's like how many packs? That's like Umbreon rare. Honestly, it's not it's not something that you're opening packs trying to pull. Like I'm I'm not opening packs trying to pull a reverse Pika. Like it just ain't ain't gonna happen. You know, with with the Master Ball on it, the, the chances of it are just so slim. How many packs are in those boxes? In the Japanese boxes, you know. Uh, is it 20? I don't, I forget. 20 packs. So yeah, you're talking 20 packs. It's 20. So you need to rip, say there's 120 cards that can get reversed. You need to rip 2,400 packs to get the one card you're looking for. Pretty much. That's, that's how many packs you have to rip to get one of every reverse in the master ball. It feels like a lot. 2,400. That's literally like and you could go 2,400 packs and not get the one. You're going to get you're going to get a shit ton of duplicates. That was my problem chasing my freaking Leroy Jenkins card I wanted. Like there's one epic rare per box and there's 22 epic rares or something. Yeah, it was no 24 epic rares, two per box. So on average you'll get one every 12 boxes. Yep. I didn't get one in seven boxes so it feels bad. Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't even think about that. So I'm, I'm a buyer. I'm a buyer, buyer and seller of those because they're doing very well. If you can get those I, cheap, shit. I dude, think they'll buy. do very well. Uh, that is something that I, I feel confident in. That that's that is something just because of the the lack of it flooding the market. I don't think it's something that's going to be readily available and i think there's demand for it i think it's a perfect storm for those kind of things and even like i'm not talking crazy hundreds of dollars of 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 uh of money for it but even like you know commons like you know just just regular stuff people want to collect a full set 
people want a favorite one, they want a favorite artist, whatever it is, it's just going to be harder to get, and that's going to, you know, just drive up prices. So, yeah, interesting. What else you got going on? Not a whole lot, man. Um, ready to ready to go to bed almost though. <laughs> uh, but uh, same. These guys, these guys on eBay are pissing me off. So I'm not going to name drop them yet. But coming soon to an Instagram story near you, probably. I had purchased about three thousand dollars of this Japanese 151 box, and that was over a month ago. Basically, what they did is they had marked it as shipped, attached a label to it, and it just kind of sat there, sat there, sat there, never updated. Um, I reach out to them, I'm like, "Hey, are you going to ship my boxes?" And basically, their words. Let me let me just read their effing response to what they said. Like, is this is this a logical sentence? I said, hello, are these shipping soon? Please advise, thanks. Hi, DeGreen. We already refunded majority of our orders, and we believe we already shipped yours. We believe we already shipped yours, they said. And my response is, well, you need to give me an updated tracking number because the one just says marked is shipped. Label, label created. That's it. So it's been cricket since then. I reached out to them on Instagram then, and they said, send me an email to Yahoo. I'm like, what the fuck are we doing here? I'm on like three different platforms reaching out to these people. I email them on Yahoo. They return back to me. They're like, well, your order has been canceled. I'm like, great. Cancel the effing order then and refund me my three effing grand because it's still open. It's still effing open. I opened the case with eBay. They're over there fisting themselves doing God knows what because I'm not getting my three grand back. It's taken way too damn long. I don't know what the F they're doing. It's crazy. Why are you oh. not white, white glove servicing a three thousand dollar order? Like that Crazy. is something that I would feel, even as a business, like that's a lot of money. That's paying staff for a couple of weeks, like a member of staff. Like there's some serious money, three grand to to throw out on an order. Like I would be white gloving the shit out of that thing. So I bought this at 150 box as like a, basically a pre-order price. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't get the quantity they wanted apparently, and then the price also went up of the boxes. Right. By the time it was time for them to ship, the price was 170, 180 a box. And come to find out, these effing cocksuckers are basically selling mystery boxes with 151 packs in them now. Currently, as I sit talking about this. So not only are they not shipping me my 151 product because they don't have it, they're doing sure, mystery they packs, boxes to with else. the 151 packs. Exactly. They're optimizing their freaking product, not shipping to me because they can make more money off of it. So speculation there, but still effing crash that that they haven't refunded my money yet. What are we doing? Well, so stay they're tuned. Going to get slabbed is what they're going to do. Yeah. Gonna get slab slapped. Yeah. Yeah, so, we know who you are. We know who you are. Yeah, it's it's dark out there, man. That's not that fun. Sucks. First time that's happened to me. The good thing is it was eBay, so I'm confident that despite yeah. the weight and the money tied up and the 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 stress and the experience of it, like oh, obviously sucks. But eBay hopefully should take care of it and and get it resolved. Yeah. Pretty soon, you know, you're at the month mark. It should get taken pretty soon. So fingers crossed for that, that you don't have any more headaches from it. Um, yeah, not worried list. about the refund. Just They're just limey. Might be a good one to share in. Uh, I think Rattle has the eBay blacklist um, slot in the Discord. That might be a good one sharing there and just give a brief synopsis when 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 we do, you know, at least when you do talk about it, it might be a good one to share just just to make people aware of that seller will do that kind of stuff, you know, from your experience. I'm sure people would want to be uh given a heads up of it. Yeah. So not everyone wants to tie up three grand for two months. So yeah, that's a rough one. I can't imagine you only one too. Yeah, I'm curious how many how many of them out there are just like me. Like, do they have ten of us on the on the hook right now? They've gotten two negative feedbacks in the last.
couple months because they canceled orders. Yep. Are they also sitting on Probably ten other same. people's three thousand dollars? Like, did they just clean up thirty grand? Yep. And what's going on? So it'll be I interesting. So. To see how it plays out here soon. I think you. I think you hit it right on the nose. Honestly, I think you're right there. This is exactly what I think happened. It's sad, but oh, excuse me. Let's wrap. Yeah, <laughs> it's late. All right, guys. Thank you for that. Um, don't forget, we always say every week, spice topic, leave your spice topic. Don't forget to vote. Obviously, um, you can write other comments too. It doesn't have to be spice topic, but get involved, get in there and uh, and cast your vote. We love it. You can vote for more than one too, whichever ones you think are cool. Um, get involved. Um, thanks. We'll see you guys. Thanks, everyone. Later. Appreciate the support. Peace. Bye.